Hey everybody, so I am in Washington DC, a city with no shortage of cool museums, and today we're gonna to be checking out the International Spy Museum, a museum dedicated entirely to the clandestine art of spying. Come with me, I think it's gonna be a good one. So this device here is a replica of something known as the turtle, which was a submersible device used in the Revolutionary War to attach a bomb underneath a British ship. It was a one-man submersible submarine. Pretty crazy to think that they actually attempted something like this, and it worked, but they failed on the mission. So, and here we're looking at a replica version of it. Oh, check this out. This is really cool. This is the James Bond Aston Martin. I don't know if this was the actual one used in the movie. It's not very clear as to whether this is screen used or a replica, but it's really cool. I just want to point out some details. Down here, where these lights, it's, I don't know if I can touch it, but you can see where they would flip open and the machine guns would pop out. And we have this uh, extendable bumper. And back here, we have these uh, retractable spikes on the back wheel. Very cool. And here we can see one of the original spies. Just a dude up in the tree listening in on ya. So here we have some different spy artifacts. We have a silent kill crossbow. Yikes. And over here we have a news article on the Rosenbergs who were executed for spying. And this is a letter from J. Edgar Hoover concerning their sentencing. And so this was a toolkit that was uh, hidden in a very interesting location. So here we have some classic James Bond style spy gadgets. We have a sniper camera from the Soviet Union. We have this tiny spy camera. Kind of funny to think of something like that as being a gadget considering how small cameras are nowadays and we all have them. Here we have a camera disguised as a glasses case. We have a hidden camera disguised as suspenders. We have watch cameras, all kinds of cool stuff like that. Here we have some objects used to disguise hidden messages. And down here we have different examples of invisible ink, secret writing. Interesting stuff. So here we have a lamp modified to be a communication device. And this is a radio disguised as a suitcase used by US intelligence in World War II. And here we have a transmitter disguised as a clock. Really neat stuff, you know? So this device was created by the Soviet Union to detect listening bugs that could be hidden in a room. So this is really interesting. This is a wooden seal that was gifted to the US ambassador in Russia by a group of children. And it actually contained secret listening devices and they didn't discover it until sometime later. So this is a directional microphone. And I remember seeing these in like old James Bond movies and stuff like that. And look at that. And so this is a microphone hidden in a shoe. These were things that, you know, I would see in like James Bond movies. And I didn't think they were actually real, but they were. Here we have a listening device concealed in a tree stump. So this is a listening device concealed in a building block that the CIA actually built into the Soviet embassy in Washington, D.C. when it was constructed. Kind of crazy to think of something like that. Here we have just different examples of how you could conceal an object in something else, like just like a little canister and a cigarette like that, or like a false bottom in a shoe, or something hidden in the handle of an umbrella like that. They even hid stuff inside coins. That's pretty amazing. So this is a listening device that was hidden inside a fake, um, well, you know. So spies would actually hide devices hidden behind fake body parts. They would have like a false eye or a false tooth or even something that could be um, hidden inside the body. 
Here we have a shaving kit that had different concealment devices in it. And here we can see a wooden figure that was concealing devices. It was in, used in West Germany. We have hidden objects and ashtrays, different screwdrivers, stuff like that. Really amazing. Here we have different elements of disguise, such as a fake mask. I don't know how convincing that would be. We have fake dentures. We have fake shoes used to make people appear taller than they were. We have this made to simulate the appearance of a pregnant woman. We have just uh, different elements of disguise right here. Here we can see a map that was actually concealed inside a playing card. That's amazing. And here we can see a knife that was concealed in a pair of boots. Good to use in a pinch. So here we can see an outfit worn by the famous spy Mata Hari, who was a spy in World War I, who used the art of seduction to get information, who was ultimately executed. One thing the movies do get right is that my brief spy career ended in disaster. Yeah, so she was a spy for the French, and I guess she was kind of a failure and used as a scapegoat for the French's failures, and she was ultimately executed for it. So this here is a robotic snake used for spying. I'm not clear what exactly you'd do with this, but it's pretty impressive to see. So this is a portable kit used to copy a key. Pretty interesting stuff. So here we can see all kinds of different lock picks and things like that. And this was actually used to slip under a door and actually turn the latch on a door without actually having to pick the lock. So spies had to get very creative with where they would hide their cameras and transmitters and things. They would even use pigeons. Here we can see that in the Vietnam War they were hiding transmitters in actual pieces of poo. And the CIA at one point would gut rats and put secret messages inside of them. So these objects here were actually used to open envelopes without actually having to break the seal. It seems like they um, went through a lot of effort to do that back in the day. This was a CIA kit used to do that. Here we have different things used to like steam envelopes and stuff like that. So what we're looking at here is a section of the Berlin Tunnel. And this was a tunnel that was dug from the American sector of East Germany to the Soviet side of West Germany. Must be scary going inside that. Well, people did that. So here we can see a pigeon that was actually outfitted with a camera for use in World War I. It's amazing that they were able to do things like this. So this is really incredible. What we are looking at here, this, this piece of machinery, it held film that was dropped from a spy satellite um, with a parachute and it was actually picked up mid-air by a plane. That's quite an impressive feat that they were able to pull that off. So this whole setup here with this camera and the computer, it was actually used to detect anthrax spores during the post 9-11 anthrax scares that were going on. So this here was known as Sleeping Beauty, which is a submersible motorized canoe used by the British in World War II. So that thing was actually able to dive underwater and pass undetected amongst enemy ships. Really cool. I don't know about you, but I, I wouldn't feel safe doing that. But brave men did that. And, and roll the giant horse inside. When darkness falls, Sinon escapes his captors and unlocks the hatch on the belly of the beast. Our men stealthily descend and open the city's gates to the rest of our army. So here we can see some weapons and armor used by the Mongolian army of Genghis Khan. Look at this suit of armor. Over here we have some, some pretty ferocious weapons. We have this spear, this bow and arrow, and we have a whip and some swords. That's some serious weaponry right there. So one of the most famous spies in history and pop culture, 
is the ninja of historic Japan. And here we can see the suit of a ninja. And down here we can see some armor worn by a ninja, but that looks um, kind of small. I guess it was used by a, a kid ninja. Oh no, it says just a, a very small man. <laughs> and here we have tiny, tiny little guns, little matchlock pistols that were used by the ninja. And of course we have the famous ninja throwing stars. And I gotta say, those look uh, pretty deadly if I do say so. So this is a British paratrooper disguise used for camouflage in snowy climates. And here we have a miniature Morse code radio. Okay, so here we have a case of more spy gadgets and weapons. So these are different guns that were concealed in regular everyday objects. We have this glove gun. We have a cigarette gun, flashlights, lighters, pens, all sorts of things like that. Stuff you'd see in spy movies, but they were actually real and actually used in different espionage operations. Pretty wild to think about these things. Here we have a deadly dagger, some pistols and rifles. So this is an exhibit on Leon Trotsky, who was exiled from the Soviet Union and eventually executed by Stalin. And this is pretty wild. He was murdered with an ice pick, and this is the actual murder weapon used to kill him. Pretty crazy. And these were worn by the assassin. Pretty insane to think we're looking at pieces used in such a brutal event. So here we have another wild piece of history. So Georgi Markov was a Bulgarian politician who was exiled for being um, critical of the government. And he was assassinated with a poison pellet fired from an umbrella. And this is that umbrella. That's insane. Let's get a closer look at this. You can see a cutaway at some of the components of this thing. So it wasn't a gun, it was some sort of poison dart. Here we can see a toppled statue of Lenin hanging up above us. Here we can see some equipment used in the conflict between Russia and Afghanistan in the 70s and 80s. Different uh, military equipment. Over here we have a uh, suit made out of burlap used for camouflage. All right, so continuing on through the spy museum, moving down from the top floor onto the next floor and eventually we'll reach the bottom. So coming soon is an exhibit on George Washington and his spying efforts. So if you are interested in coming here in the future, you may see this. So here we can see stuff from the Oklahoma City bombing terrorist attack. This was the hat worn by Timothy McVeigh, which was actually showing support for uh, David Koresh of the Waco, Texas cult. And here is um, pieces of the actual truck that contained the bomb. Yikes. All right, so here we have an exhibit on spying in World War II. This should be really interesting. So this was a portable radio that was hidden in a suitcase and it was actually attached to a bicycle and used to generate electricity to operate. That's pretty amazing that they were able to pull that off. So these were fake paratrooper dummies that were dropped prior to D-Day, used as a deception to kind of fool the Germans as to where troops were actually landing. All right, fateful failures. Let's see what's in here. So this exhibit deals with some of the different failures of intelligence that led up to the 9-11 attacks. So this is actually a charred flight manual recovered from the 9-11 wreckage used by the hijackers. Sheesh, that's that's chilling to see that in person. So here we have a doll version of Anna Chapman 
who was a spy for Russia operating in the United States. And I remember when that happened and everybody was like kind of okay with it and they like wanted to forgive her and it was all just because she was hot. I don't know, that was just kind of crazy to me. So this deals with the Rosenbergs who were executed for espionage. And a famous element of this case was he, uh, Julius Rosenberg used a piece of a jello box which he actually cut in a unique shape that he would use to meet with his contact. And this is kind of a recreation of what that jello box may have looked like. And so the Rosenbergs, they were executed for spying. And it turns out they actually were spies. Whether they deserve to be executed or not, well, that's kind of a matter of opinion. But it was kind of a controversial subject, but yes, they were, they were indeed spies. So this is an exhibit on cyber attacks, how technology has kind of changed the landscape of spying. And I look through all of these different gadgets and things here, and I think like, Modern technology has supplanted all of this, all these hidden cameras, things like that. It's just, it's really weird to think about things like that. Oh, uh, we have an infinity room. Oh, you know we gotta check that out. I love these things. I'm in the matrix, you guys. I can see into forever. So here we have a laptop used by the famous hacker, The Jester. At one point he shut down WikiLeaks and other radical Islamic sites. And this was a laptop used and signed by him. Okay, so this looks like an exhibit on different pop culture spies. Here we have different spy themed toys for kids. All kinds of cool vintage toys. I love this stuff. Here we can see different pop culture spies here. We have the Avengers, not not the Marvel Avengers, but the British Avengers. We have the man from Uncle, some toys from that. We got Get Smart. Cool little toy pistol here. Oh, and here we have some James Bond stuff. I've noticed a serious lack of James Bond in this museum. So this exhibit looks like it deals with interrogation tactics such as torture and other horrible things like that. So here we have some different historical torture devices. We have the thumb screw. We have the heretic's fork, which they put your head here in the top, your hands through the middle and your feet on the bottom. And of course the Iron Maiden. Now I've heard the Iron Maiden wasn't actually real. and That was just kind of a uh, sort of a carnival trick, but I don't know about that. All right, so this is a waterboarding kit used by the U.S. military. And um, I gotta say, that's really messed up that it just set on it straight away, waterboard kit. You know, it's really, really horrible things that were happening at the hands of our own military. So this is a section about the fall of the Berlin Wall. Let's take a walk through here and see what it's like. So this is sort of a mock-up of a house, and it kind of shows that people were actually digging down to create tunnels and ways to escape the Berlin Wall. That's, that's crazy that people were forced to do such desperate things for freedom. It's really sad. So this room has all kinds of different concealed listening devices. Let's look at some of these things. Oh, look at this old clock radio. Here we can see a camera that was hidden in an umbrella. We have a, a belt, which could be used to conceal film. This is a flask with a hidden chamber inside of it. Oh, look at that. This is a um, hidden chamber in the bottom of a boot heel. And so this is a camera Hidden in a cuckoo clock used to spy on hotel rooms. And so here we can see a cutaway of a Trabant, which is known as being one of the worst cars of all time, but it was the only thing really available in East Germany. And it was used in different spying methods and smuggling people out of uh, 
the communist side of Germany. You can see these people hidden here in the false chambers in the car. And here we can see some different toy versions of the Trabant car. All right, so I'm making my way towards the exit of this museum, and I just gotta say, this is a really beautiful building with a nice view of Washington, D.C. here. Okay, so here we have this big, full-size inflated tank. So, inflatable tanks, such as this one, were actually used by the British Army in the lead-up to D-Day to fool the Germans as to the actual position of their army. Pretty smart. All right, let's take a look at this gift shop because this looks pretty neat. Oh, take a look at this. They have spy garden gnomes. <laughs> I love that. You can even get that on a t-shirt. Or you could even get a shot glass version of the spy gnome. You can get a t-shirt with the camera pigeon that was used to spy during World War I. And you can buy these fake canned goods to hide your valuables or, um, you know, anything else you don't want your mom to find. I gotta say, they have some really good merch here. They got all these, like, cups and t-shirts with these really cool phrases and stuff. You can even get a Checkpoint Charlie sign. So they have a lot of merch for the popular anime Spy Family. I have not watched this one, but I've heard it's good. So tell me, should I watch this one? If you've seen it, let me know in the comments down below if I should check out Spy Family. You can get this really cool secret Illuminati dollar bill t-shirt. So thank you for joining me on this trip to the International Spy Museum in Washington, DC. Great museum, a lot of fun. Um, just a couple things I wanna point out. Um, there's a large interactive element to this museum. There's sort of like a whole role play thing you can do where you pretend to be a spy and you go through and you play all these games. And um, I didn't do that because I didn't feel like it would be good for the YouTube video. But if you wanna come here and experience that, that's something you can do and I'm sure it's a lot of fun. Another thing was there's a lot of historical context they give you in this museum. They have like full videos for each exhibit, um, full write-ups and everything. And um, I would have loved to have dived deeper into that in this video, but it would have been like a two hour long video if I tried to do that. But um, again, if you want to come here yourself and do that, um, it's a great experience. I do want to point out though that this was not a free museum. Many of the museums in DC are free. Um, this one was about $30 per person. Um, not bad in my opinion, but if you're coming with a group of people, if you're bringing the family kids, it could end up being kind of pricey. So just something to keep in mind, but definitely come check it out. It's a lot of fun. International Spy Museum in Washington, DC. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video.